Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now May 26th of 2022. We are just a couple of hours out from the official release of the Obi-Wan Kenobi TV series that saw set and ready to debut on Disney Plus giving us two chapters in one day for the overall Star Wars fandom. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars updates. Also, by the way, guys, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support. It is greatly appreciated. Now, one thing that a lot of fans have been very excited about has a lot to do with exactly what Deborah Chow has in store, not just for season one of Obi-Wan Kenobi, but also the future of the overall Star Wars universe that she's going to be involved in. Now, do remember that she's going to be directing and writing other Star Wars TV shows out there with, of course, John and Dave Filoni as well. Now, on top of all of this, by far one of the most anticipated Star Wars TV shows of all time right now is indeed the Obi-Wan Kenobi TV show, and following that we have the Ahsoka Tano TV series. Now, mind you, I'm still very much excited for The Mandalorian Season 3, as well as a lot of other fans out there, but there's no denying the fact that a lot of fans love the Jedi mythology and everything to do with the Force, etc. that's going to be heavily explored in both of these TV shows. Now, when it all comes down to Deborah Chow, and we talked about Deborah Chow, the director, numerous times before in the past couple of weeks now, is that she is just as passionate as both John and Dave Filoni, and that exactly is the main reason as to why I believe that we are in good hands when it comes to the Kenobi series and beyond. You know, we already know that Disney, of course, is trying their absolute best to steer things in the right direction, to really give fans, you know, a lot of things to look forward to. And given that today is the first day of Star Wars Celebration, we will be learning a lot more about shows like Andor, Mando Season 3, and maybe even, of course, the Ahsoka series and others out there. So on top of all of this, however, all right, given that both Disney and Lucasfilm are beginning to work on the Ahsoka Tano series for Disney+, Plus. Creators John and Dave Filoni are also working on a handful of other projects that are set to be announced in the coming months. Now, it's described, however, that currently Disney CEO Bob Chapek greenlit a second and third season of the Kenobi series that is set to move forward in the near future to complete the story of the character. However, it's noted that they will be using many of the original scripts from the, from the Kenobi movie and even the original storyboards from the first season of the Kenobi series for the second season. One major scene of which is planned for the second season of the Kenobi series is set to feature the return of many iconic characters from the prequel trilogy movies and even Star Wars Legends. One sequence in particular that is set to make its way to the second season of Kenobi is the return of Darth Maul during the time when he is involved in crime syndicates. Now, one of the scenes from the original scripts of the Kenobi movie that will be used for season two involves a full-on scene between both Darth Maul and a brand new hidden Jedi that is captured as a prisoner in the series that Maul is using for his own advantage to try and find someone from another crime syndicate. This is described to be an interrogation scene of sorts between Maul and this hidden Jedi to where the newly introduced Jedi is eventually destroyed by the hands of Maul's double-bladed lightsaber. Now, the scene is set to progress to a moment in which it cuts away to another world that is set to house a very special character from the prequels, Mace Windu. So let me just stop right here for a second before we get on to the real interesting stuff, is that I think that the return of Darth Maul is a very smart move on their part. The fact that he was involved in the original scripts of the Kenobi movie, mind you, not the, not the original scripts of the Kenobi series, because... Deborah Chow made that clear that, you know, Darth Maul was never a part of the original scripts of the Kenobi series. But initially, when Kenobi was being made into a movie, there were multiple drafts, there were a lot of scripts made, and in one of those scripts, they had a lot of stuff for Darth Maul arising and showing us involved in his crime syndicate, of course, known as Crimson Dawn. Now, th with that being said, we already know that Darth Maul is a heavily you know, uh, introduced character in the Star Wars universe. You know, we already know that this character has gone through a lot. We, we saw him pretty much get obliterated in episode one, only to be rebuilt in the Clone Wars, and then coming back again in Solo, a Star Wars story. So they're really trying to bring Maul back into the equation, and I think I do have to respect that, because he really is like one of the most, one, one most well-written characters, or villains, I should say, 
in the Star Wars franchise. But moving on from that, all right. Now this is a scene that will be created from many of the original storyboards for the original story of the first season of Kenobi as well that was scrapped over a year ago, where an older Mace Windu is seen inside of an ancient Jedi temple, where Kenobi eventually meets Mace once again since 12 years ago. Now this is where Kenobi is looking to find some form of guidance of trying to stay hidden without giving himself away. The Kenobi series is once again set to showcase Kenobi going off-world, at many times and that Kenobi even hires a very special friend to watch over Luke during the events of when he is off-world. Now it's unclear who that new character that watches over Luke is, but it is simply described to be a droid of sorts. Samuel Jackson is set to step into the second season of Kenobi, where he informs Kenobi that Vader has a very powerful Force user assassin that is trying to hunt other Jedi down. This is known to be a Star Killer. Star Killer is set to become canon in the Kenobi series, starting off with season two by bringing in Sam Witwer to portray the character once again. This was all an idea pushed by, of course, Deborah Chow before it was scrapped and is now being picked up for the second season of the Kenobi series with Maul, Starkiller, and Mace Windu as the main new characters. So let me just stop right here for a second. Now, we already know that Deborah Chow really wants to make sure that she's going to do everything that she can to revive not just prequel trilogy characters, but also Star Wars Legends characters. All right, so a lot of Legends characters are going to come back into the Star Wars universe, and one of which is indeed going to be Starkiller. In case you guys don't know, Starkiller is from the Force Unleashed video games, and they basically set him up to be Darth Vader's apprentice. Now, in this canon version, they're making him out to be simply a personal assassin of Vader to try and help him hunt down the remaining Jedi across the entire galaxy while Vader is busy with something else. That, to me, I think is a very interesting move on Disney's part to kind of not just expand Vader's influence on the galaxy, but to also show us that there are ways to actually include more villains in the story that still hold a connection to Darth Vader. And I think that's a very smart move on their part. You know, they're already doing it with the Kenobi series with the Inquisitors and how they're the new villains, but yet they're still attached to Darth Vader. I love those connections. It's all about the connections, right? So, like I say, I mean, I think that everything related to what Deborah Chow is trying to set up and what she's ult ultimately trying to do, you know, she's really trying to essentially really build this new era from the ground up. Deborah Chow, you know, believe it or not, is going to be known as the pioneer of what I like to call it as the Kenobi-verse, but it is going to be all of the stories based in between episodes three and four that she will be building and expanding, and John and Dave are going to be helping with that moving forward as well. So, like I said, guys, you know, I think that everything is moving along very well for the Kenobi show. Uh, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see how the first two chapters are from start to finish. We'll be talking a lot about that tomorrow, so keep in, you know, keep that in mind, stay tuned with that. And overall, guys, you know, Star Wars Celebration, just a couple of hours away, you know, keep your eyes open for that as well. And yeah, if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.